looking into your eyes, I know it's forever. I used to be afraid to say that. I've overcome my fears. Yeah, thinking about. So I am here with the King Teen, who is a singer and song maker upper, if I got that correct. <laughs> that is correct, sir. <laughs> so go ahead and tell us about your music and just tell us about yourself a little bit. I'm the King Teen coming at you from Durham, North Carolina. And um, I am a singer song maker upper. I'm a longtime musician in the Bay Area around San Francisco. I was in punk bands in the 80s and punk rockabilly bands in the 90s. Took a couple decades off to do some, you know, I, I wasted time. I, I worked on my career and raised a couple of kids, but uh, now I'm back to doing important things, which is uh, playing music. I uh, I decided that uh, I would try to do a solo acoustic thing uh, with kind of, I, I like to call it witty music. Uh, I don't really think of myself as a comedian, but there is wit and humor in my, in my music. Uh, they're not novelty songs, but sort of in the John Prine kind of area of humor, Lyle Lovett, that sort of thing, where you, you might get a chuckle, but hopefully that there's some real meaning in the songs as well. Uh, I've been here in Durham for less than a year, been playing around in the open mic scene and uh, trying to take the next step into uh, opening up for bands in bigger club shows, things like that. Okay, so what got you started in music in the early years? What drew you to music? Uh, well, I was... Um, I was a teenager when punk hit, uh, you know, the musicians of a certain age all have that same story of uh, they saw Elvis on the Ed Sullivan show and wanted to be a, a musician. And then younger than that, they saw the Beatles on the uh, Ed Sullivan show and they wanted to be a musician. And for me, I'm I'm old, but I'm not that old. And for me, it was when a friend in middle school uh, lent me the first Sex Pistols album, which was current at the time. Uh, I had thought that I was just a guy who didn't like music that much. I, you know, I listened to the radio or whatever, but everybody at my school was all into Aerosmith and Led Zeppelin and all this stuff that didn't do much for me. I uh, heard the Sex Pistols and and I just had that cliched moment of like, oh, I I like music. And I just tore into the punk scene. L.A. had a, had a big, I grew up in L.A., it had a big punk scene and uh it was really hard in those days to find stuff. Uh, there was no internet, of course, and none of this stuff ever got played on the radio. But, um, you know, you knew about, you'd find out about the two or three record stores in this huge metropolitan area that you might have to drive 45 minutes to. And, and they had all the import records from England and stuff and, and the sing, seven inch singles from the LA punk scene. And, um, and so I just got into it. And then, um, uh, Around the time, I guess I was freshman in college, and some friends of mine were messing around recording music, uh, just sort of bedroom stuff. But what they would do is they would go to uh, these coin-operated racquetball courts uh, by the freeway. Uh, they were open 24 hours a day, and so you, you, they'd go there at like 2 or 3 in the morning, put a bunch of quarters in, set up their gear, and then when the lights turned off because they buzzed, they would record. Um, and I was like, I want to get in on that. How do I, how do I get in on this? And my friend said, well, you know, write some songs and learn how to play an instrument. I said, what's the easiest one? He said bass. So I became a bass player and, uh, that launched me on my career of playing in local bands as a bass player and singer. And, uh, I eventually switched to, uh, rhythm guitar playing in more rockabilly bands. And I did that for a while. And then, um, after I took this sort of hiatus, uh, 20 something years. It was really during the pandemic that I got back into it. Um, it my version of baking sourdough bread or learning how to knit was uh, I picked up the, I said, I'm going to teach myself how to finger pick. I never, I could never get that down. And I still haven't got that down. But in the process of trying to learn how to finger pick, I got better at playing the uh, guitar. I always used to say nobody ever made I, I I'm the worst guitar player who ever made money playing a guitar without hitting someone with it. Um, but I, I got to a point where I was like, I could play this thing in front of an audience without it, without my playing being a kind of performance art in itself. I could carry a tune on the guitar. And so I just started uh, decided to just come out and start playing again. And, and it's been great. Um, I kind of 
you know, I wasn't making up songs for 20 years and they're, they've just been sort of pouring out of me in the, in the last six months or a year. And that includes some titles that I had scribbled down decades ago that I, you know, I, a, a clever phrase or something. And I always thought would make a song and was never able to come up with it. And lately they've just been presenting themselves as, uh, as songs that I was able to work on. So it's been really fun. It's, uh, it's, it's nice to get kind of get back into um, not just living a more creative life, but also playing in front of people and, and being in front of audiences. That was always my favorite part of being a musician. My least favorite part was, you know, making all the phone calls and trying to get gigs and stuff like that. That's, that's generally a lot of people's least favorite part. So you mentioned a lot of stuff there. Um, you started with music in the punk, uh, punk, or you got into the punk in the 80s with like the Sex Pistols um, and stuff like that. How did that sound translate into the sound that you've got in your single single dead mall right Was the, so how did those sounds translate to that <laughs> they didn't really i mean i would say you know over the years i learned a little more about music i mean the stuff i was playing in the 80s was you know it was i guess we'd call it post-punk back then but it was a lot of power chords it was fast and loud and then i played in uh i played um uh, I started to develop more musically in the 90s. I, the first thing I did was uh, my band, my last band in the 80s had broken up and I would kind of put the bass guitar away. And why I started picking up the guitar was a couple of friends of mine were busking. They were playing out on the street. Two guys, one was singing and playing acoustic and the other was playing an electric. And I said, you know, can I, I'd like to join you. And I got an acoustic bass guitar and we played out on the street with them and then things changed the electric guitar player left and we became a duo um with me playing the acoustic rhythm guitar and my partner playing the lead guitar and he was singing and then he had some throat problems so we kind of switched and i started singing um and that's when i started that process and and my my partner his name is wayne Haw. his his music is on spotify um and he he had more of a he came from more of a country background uh country and rockabilly um and that sort of merged with my sort of punk and i guess like pop background like pop in the sense of 60s you know sugar sugar that kind of pop um mm -hmm. and um and so i started learning more about country and uh and and rockabilly and 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 that type of music and that's been kind of the merger of my musical tastes ever since is that sort of acoustic and country side and my sort of original fast, loud, hard jump off the drum kit um, background. Um, so, you know, Dead Mall is, I mean, that was an attempt at finger picking. Um, I cannot tell a lie. That's not me playing the guitar on that, on that record, but. Uh, you gave um, it a shot. <laughs> I gave it a shot. Um, it's just a, a matter of, you know, you just absorb things and it, it's a combination of what I like and what I want to hear with what I'm able to play. And that gets mixed up in a unique way, just like it does for everybody. We're all limited by what we can do. Most of us are limited by it and, um, and what we know. And we're also fed by what we know and all that comes out for an individual unique mix for everybody. So that's mine. Um, it came out in that one song. I don't think De Dead Mall was the first one I recorded just because I had just, I had free time to record it and I had just made it up and I was excited about it. And so that, uh, if I were sort of planning a career here, I, that probably wouldn't have been my first single, but uh, you know, I'm not. So it was just, it was ready. So let's put it out. Well, you're doing it for the fun of it. You're doing it because you, you actually enjoy and love music and you've, it's been a part of your life. But a lot of times it comes back around, doesn't it? I've, I've talked to a lot of uh, creators, writers, painters, all sorts of people who uh, said that exact same thing. COVID was a big thing that got a lot of people to start doing stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. It, it has been. I, I am doing it for fun. And, and uh, you know, I'd like to have some success. It's more fun to play in front of a, a crowded room of people than a mostly empty room of people, but I don't have any illusion. It's been part of the joy of it is when, you know, however much I was, you know, an artiste and, you know, wasn't, was never going to sell out. Like, you know, we wanted to get signed and we wanted to go play on, you know, the Letterman show and go on tour, you know, and playing or whatever big shows. Um, 
I'm, I'm not going to get signed. I'm not going to headline Madison Square Garden. I'm probably not even going to headline local clubs here in, in the Triangle. I like it's. It, I'm doing this with no ambition other than, yeah, I'd like to get to a point where if I play a show, you know, 50 people will show up and it'll be a fun room. That's, I mean, that's the, that's the mountaintop of my ambitions. And it's, it's really been so much more, the mix of like fun and ambition is so different this time and so much, so much better, so much more fun. And if it's any consolation, a lot of the big artists, when they get to those big stages and, you know, they're selling out the bit the big concerts and all that, they want to go back to those selling out yeah. the 50 shows because they're like, yeah. I don't know any of my fans. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know who said it. They said it a long time ago. I remember hearing it when I was a kid on the radio, some rock star. And uh, so the, the mounts are different now. But he said, you start making $500 a night, you got $500 problems. And, uh, I, you know, I've certainly heard that my whole life. It's like, you know, be careful what you wish for and because it's uh, it's not as much fun. I mean, that's what A Star is Born is all about, right? I mean, the alienation of being a star. Like, you know, I, I've always, I always said, you know, I think I could handle it. I'd just like to give it a try. But, you know, it's okay that, that it didn't happen. <laughs> It, it hasn't happened yet. Well, it's worded like that. You never know. You never know. I appreciate right? that. Yes, you never know. Um, so tell me about your signal, the single Dead Mall, right? Tell me about uh, what inspired that and uh, what really made you write it down on paper and get it, it make that song. A lot of times uh, my songs come about because of sort of a challenge uh, to myself. I sort of give myself homework. Um, I was, we had, my wife and I had just moved here to, I, we live in Durham, North Carolina now. We moved here from the Bay Area last year. And we were driving around with my cousins who already lived here. And they were kind of, they weren't showing us around, but we were driving somewhere and we were still in that stage where they're pointing stuff out, you know. And here in our neighborhood, uh, there is a dead mall. And uh, my cousin said, there's the dead mall. Um, that should be a song, shouldn't it? And I just, thought, I didn't say anything, but I thought, yeah, that should be a song. And I, I started kind of percolating on it. And um, I started thinking of some funny lines and some funny ideas around it and um, came up with the song. And I I gave him songwriting credit. If we ever make money off it, he's going to get a cut. Uh, not 50%, but he will get a cut. And uh, so that's his, that's his first, he's not a musician. It's, it's his first songwriting credit. So uh, he, he that's uh that's that's where that came from it was just it was sort of almost like a little homework assignment i gave myself I'm like yeah that is a good idea it it definitely rings true we've got a mall here that yeah there's still places that people are still going to some of the places but as a whole it's uh kind of a dead place to go <laughs> yeah and the, you know it's a i i sort of I hate malls. I've always hated malls. Like the song is not from my point of view. Um, but I did find myself um, sort of almost accidentally, like one of the times I played it, I played it at an open mic and it was a mixed music and comedy open mic. And the comedian who got up after me, uh, he just sort of said like, damn, that was actually poignant. <laughs> and uh, I sort of accidentally ran into some poignancy because it is a lot for a lot of people. The mall is a big deal. It was the only place you could go as a kid. Uh, you'd have to have a little freedom and, and, you know, anything that is in your past can be a sweet memory. And, and I, and I really did in the last verse, I talk about how I teach my kids to drive now in the empty parking lots. And, um, and I, that, that part was true. I had just gotten through a, a time we, just this last summer, right before I made up that song, I had taught my daughter to drive in the empty parking lot of a dead mall in, in Richmond, California. And, um, and so, yeah, it is, it was sort of accidentally kind of, kind of poignant. And, um, and that's, that's kind of what I like to do. I like it. I, I like it when, you know, in the room of playing and play, from stage, you get laughs, people, you know, smile or chuckle or, or laugh at a, at a clever line or whatever. But when they, but there's also some actual feeling. That's why I say, I like, I don't do novelty songs. I, I try to at least get a little bit of real feeling into, into the humor. That's my, that's my favorite kind of, of humor. So tell me about this homework you're talking about. Have you, it, you said you did homework on this. You kind of give yourself homework to write a song. Tell me what the process is that you, do in order to do that homework um it, just that I, I mean just that's the assignment it's like huh uh, uh, so as opposed to 
I'm just walking around or, you know, I'm in the shower. The, my best ideas always, I'm sure a lot of people are like this. My best ideas always come when I can't write them down. Um, so I'm, you know, in the shower or I'm whatever, I'm driving or some, you know, just don't have paper uh, before there were phones. That, that was a big problem. Um, yeah. But uh, so, and then you just have this moment of inspiration. It's like, that would be a song. But like, as opposed to, I don't have an idea for a song, but here's a subject and let me see if I can make a song out of this, almost like it's an assignment. Um, so I'm just like, I guess that's how when people write songs for movies, that's how they do it. Okay, we need a song where, you know, one person is singing to another and the subject matter is this. Like, I've always kind of been fascinated by how they can do that and have it not sound like complete crap when it doesn't. And so... Um, just that idea it was like, okay, I've got this idea. I'm riding around in the car. I just, he just said that we're in the car. We're doing something. We're going somewhere. Like I can't do it now. I have to remember it. And at some point I'm going to sit down and see if I could like come up with a song about a dead mall. Like what's, what's the angle? What's the, how do I, how do I get into it? And, and so that's it. It's just, it's just a matter of um, sitting down with an idea as opposed to, um, just having a bolt of inspiration and, and, you know, you start singing it to yourself, which is how a lot of, uh, my songs have their origin. Okay. So you ever do that with one of the ones that you're like singing in the shower and then you're like, wait, that would be a good tune. I need to make that homework for later. And then you go and yeah. do that. Well, usually what I do in the, in a case like that, when I can is I, I, I mean, how I, the reason I say I'm a song maker up or not a songwriter is I rarely am like sitting there with you know at a computer or at with pencil and paper and you know pencil behind my ear as i work out the chords on the piano kind of thing um i just don't work that way what i do is i start singing to myself and i just sing it over and over and over to myself to memorize it and i change the words around or i might change the tune around uh, the tune kind of doesn't get set until i have an instrument in my hand but often i have a pretty good idea of the tune and I have most of the words figured out and memorized just in the process of making it up um, because I just keep repeating it to myself. And so that's usually how I work um, as opposed to, yeah, just sort of sitting down and, you know, writing and then, you know, crossing it out. No, that doesn't work. And, and you know, it's, it's a, I might do that at the very end when I've, I've got most of the idea, but there's like, there's a bad line, you know, and like, I might sit, I might be sitting there and, you know, looking up things on the rhyming dictionary.com or whatever it is and that kind of thing. But um, for the most part, how I, how I do it is I just keep repeating things to myself. Um, long distance driving is another good one. Um, that's a good time to, you know, turn off the podcasts or whatever and if, uh, you know it helps if you're by yourself so nobody's talking to you and nobody's like yeah hey, let's see what's on the radio um but you know if i'm in the car for a while uh sometimes i can i can uh sort of you just sort of have to have that freedom to sort of get in a zone and um just enough of my brain is available to not get in a wreck and the rest of it is focused on on making up this song and, and so that's a good time to do that as well okay. so have you always done the song maker upper sort of thing all through you know you said you were out skate park making songs you did that even then no uh that's a more recent coinage uh, just because when you're playing as a solo artist uh, when you're playing in bands, it just never came up. Like, what are you? I'm a guy in a band. You know, I'm the singer for the band. I'm the front man or, you know, I'm the bass player or whatever it is. Like, um, it's only doing what I'm doing now that it's like, I am a singer songwriter like that. And that's just a label that it doesn't seem to fit for me. But yeah, it never really came up before. Um, so so how did you do, what was your process with the early songs? And did it change into the song maker and upper and the homework kind of thing? Um, how so? I think it's pretty much always been the same. I, you know, I've always had that thing of um, a couple of different ways of doing things. One is like something just hits me, a, a phrase or a, a, a musical idea hits me and I just start churning on it uh, in my mind. And of course, you know, different times in my life, I've had different amounts of 
that kind of time I'm talking about where I don't, I can get to a place where I don't have distractions, you know, before I had kids and uh, before there were smartphones and, you know, and there was nothing on TV, you know, like, <laughs> it's like, there was a lot easier to just like stare into space and think about something and live by myself. Um, but it was basically that same process of either um, kind of what feels like a bolt out of the blue idea um, and start working on it or, hearing or reading or sometimes accidentally saying just like a really good phrase um and and like thinking like oh that's a song that's a song title or that's a line for a song or that's a song that's a line i could build something around um and then it, you know sometimes it's like having to sit there and, you know okay i've had this idea and now i have to work on it as opposed to and then sometimes it's more like it just came really fast. It just, uh, yeah, I, I am trying to write it down and it's, uh, it's coming to me faster than I can write it down. But I do, I do tend to, um, hear turns of phrase or, you know, just things people say or, um, titles of things. And, um, uh, or like I said, there's been a couple of times when I've said something and I was like, hold on, I've got to write that down because that's, you know, that's a song. I, I, I just told, I have a newsletter and I, I just told the story of one. Uh, I have this song called, well, I'll tell you the story, but I was working at it. I'm a journalist. I was working at a newspaper on the, on the night desk and this photographer came in um, and she had been shooting a, a concert at the Oakland Coliseum. And she was talking about this singer that she, and uh, this male singer. And I was like, you know, I'm young jerk and i was like yeah i'm not a fan and she says yeah he's so pretty though and i said well them pretty boys are all the same but us ugly guys got style and then it's like as soon as i don't know where that came from and i was like go away i've got to go to work and what i really needed to do was write that down so that i wouldn't forget it and i've had that song too i now have a song called them pretty boys are all the same but us ugly guys got style and it's been it's always been very well received i played it back in the band days and i, I still play it Okay, so it's turn of phrase or just like you said, the the blue balls kind of catching you off guard. I imagine when, being a journalist, those sort of things kind of come to you every once in a while, those turn of phrases and stuff, you're just going to have pop up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you sort of train yourself to recognize them, I guess. A, a lot of, I mean, I've heard other creative people being uh, talking in this way about how so much of it is just sort of being open you know it feels like it's a bolt out of the blue but really what's going on is you're you've trained yourself to notice um things that in your environment or thoughts that you have or when someone says something you're you're kind of always on receive um and and sort of like to notice when something like that happens and, and try to remember it or write it down hmm. on receive sounds like a song title to me <laughs> <laughs> there you go okay so you mentioned you had a single coming out. Um, when's that coming out? What's the title? Where can we look for it? Uh, the song is called There Goes the Neighborhood. It's coming out April 11th. It'll be on all the streaming services. It'll be on my YouTube channel, which is King Team Music. Um, and I'm sure I'll be dumping all sorts of little YouTube shorts and Instagram stories and stuff. Instagram is also King Team Music. Uh, but on all the streaming services, it's a... Um, it is dead mall was a little bit of i mean a lot of it was um not actual musicians but you know it's more of a full band treatment uh this is just me actually playing the guitar um and singing and um it is it's another one of those songs that i think is um is it's got some humor in it and mm -hmm. but it has a mess it has it has a definite like subject matter that is Oh, sort of serious and um the song there are there are bits of it from me playing it live on my social media on my youtube channel and on, on my instagram um it's about a guy talking about his neighbors and his neighbors are a dancing bear um some elephants living upstairs uh, down the hall and um the guys upstairs are dinosaurs and um in each verse he talks about them he says you know they're friends of mine i like them um but like with the bear he's with the dancing bear i really like the way he's light on his feet i like the way he keeps his yard neat but he better stay out of my trash or we're gonna fight 
And uh, when we fight, the people, the neighbors will be saying, there goes the neighborhood. And so this is a song, obviously, this is, I think, obviously, this is a song about uh, what's kind of like that friendly face of bigotry, where this guy say, you know, that kind of thing is like, I hate X people, but not my friend here. He's he's one of the good ones, you know, that kind of bigotry. And so as long as these, but, you know, as long as this bear is cool, I like him as long as he doesn't act too much like a bear, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, and then there goes the neighborhood is the traditionally a phrase uh, used when the wrong kind of people move into your neighborhood. And in this song, it's the guy who's talking, who's the problem. He's the one starting all the fights. So it's sort of like, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's more graceful than I'm explaining it. I mean, it's it, in the song itself, this story I think is pretty um, clear what's happening, but uh, it's, it's one of those songs where you can just hear it you know, an eight year old could hear it and think like, that's a funny song about how, you know, he's talking about a bear and he has his neighbor and he might, he's going to get mad if he gets in his trash. But like, if, if you're thinking about it a little more there, there is a message there. Um, so, and you know, hopefully it's just a fun song to listen to. Yeah. Hopefully people enjoy it for sure. It sounds interesting. I'm definitely going to be looking for that on April 11th, right? April 11th. Couple of things I just want to ask. Um, do you always try to convey thoughts like that through your work? Because you talked about like the racism and the 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 dead mall is definitely poignant in the sense of pointing out, you know, there's a part of society that has just kind of moved away and we're no longer in that. Do you always try to kind of have a message when you're writing? I would say no. I, I don't think I always uh try to have a message but you know sometimes i mean i i write about the things i'm thinking about and the things i'm thinking about are sometimes silly and sometimes important um you know sometimes it's just like a, a love song um sometimes it's a it's a cranky breakup song sometimes it's about issues i have uh I have a song uh called forever which is about i mean it's it's about climate change but it's not like um, it's not. I, th I think the word is didactic. It's not. Uh, basically, the song is kind of jokey because um, what I'm saying in the song is, you know, there's a silver lining to this whole thing of, you know, the planet's going to incinerate within our lifetimes is that, like, I no longer have a fear of commitment. So kind of that's <laughs> what the song is about. So it's like it's kind of a funny song um, or at least, you know, it's a wry song. But it is talking about climate change. And so um, that, that's probably about as serious as I get in terms of like issues. I don't think of myself as as a you know singing about politics or singing about issues, but like, you know, uh, politics and issues are, you know, what happens when you walk out your front door. So they seep in uh, in their own way. Um, yeah. Tell me about which piece, which song you've ever written is your favorite which one do you think is your favorite i know oh. I'm kind of like picking your favorite child but <laughs> i know well i have a favorite child but um <laughs> no, i'm just kidding <laughs> um uh my next door neighbor actually uh when i, I lived in st louis for a while the next door neighbor uh was talking about his grandkids and he had two is grandkids here what's that is this the bear <laughs> no yes um but yeah, I had this next door neighbor who babysat his two young, you know, two little girls who were his granddaughters. He took care of them after school. And uh, we were sitting together having a beer while they were playing in the yard. And the younger one came by and said something. And, and he goes like, she's my favorite. And he goes, I'm, you're not supposed to have favorites, but I do. <laughs> but I don't. Uh, anyway. Yeah. It is kind of like that, um, and it changes, uh, you know, always kind of like the latest one, you know, the one I just made up is the one that I think is like, you know, a shocking work of brilliance. Um, and then it fades back into the rotation a little bit. I'm actually quite fond of, uh, I think not just because it's coming out now as a single, but I mean, it, it's more the reverse. I'm, I wanted to bring it out um, now because... I, there goes the neighborhood. I I do really like it. It it works well on a lot of levels. It is 
funny. It can get some laughs. It, it, it does have a deeper meaning and sort of musically it's kind of in the middle in that sort of way. I use it to open sets a lot. I feel like I can, if you hear me play this song, you get what I'm doing. Like I'm not coming out. I'm not, I'm not like sensitive boy who's doing, you know, slow, soft songs about, um, you know, his, his love life. Um, or nature, or, you know, any of that. I don't mean to insult any of that. I'm just, that's just not me. Um, I'm not like crazy old guy, but I'm like, you know, this is like, um, this is sort of the level of humor and mix of humor and seriousness. And there's more, it's a little bit more of a dynamic song than um, I, I think a lot of, that's sort of my criticism of being in this uh, scene uh, where the lot you know there's a lot of solo acoustic singer songwriter types and so many of them are so good so talented and you know my one sort of i guess criticism that i see the mo that comes up the most for me is like there's not enough variation in dynamics of like loud and quiet and of fast and slow and so i think this song has some of that has i i think i tend to do that um because I just like it, but also because it's like, nobody's going to be sitting there like admiring my guitar player, my guitar playing for 30 minutes. I got to give them something and dynamics goes a long way. Um, and so mm -hmm. this, I'm sorry. The showmanship. Yes. Yeah. I do. Showmanship is definitely a part of what I do. Um, that comes from being, you know, a front man and rockabilly, drum, rockabilly bands and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that I think that song is. I sort of use it as a calling card. I think I think if you if you hear me play that song, you like have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to be doing for the next twenty or thirty minutes on stage, and that's why I play it first. So I, I like it for that reason. But you know, I I like a if I'm playing it, I like it. Uh, if I if I if I make it up and I'm not excited about it, I probably won't play it unless I've got a three hour gig, which has not happened yet. So. Mm -hmm. So what are your future plans then? You, you, you've got the single coming out. What are you doing after that? What's, what's in the future for the King team? Uh, more record. I've, I've got another song in the can. I think, you know, in, in, the, in an earlier period of music history, it would have been the B-side. So, you know, now you sort of like, well, you release them six weeks apart or whatever, but uh, I recorded two songs at once. Um, I want to do more recording. I'd like to maybe find some people to do. I don't want to be in a band, but I'm, I might want to find some people to help me do some recording with more instrumentation um, and better playing. I mean, this this musician I'm working with is really not great. Um, <laughs> fortunately, the recording engineer is not great either. Yeah. Um, Just that yeah. finger pluck. It, it, he can get it. <laughs> He'll give him enough time, but then, but then you know the recording engineer will probably screw it up. So, um, happens. So yeah, I'd like I'd like to do that, and I'd like to, like I said, I'd like to move uh, the open mic scene here in the Triangle is just, like ridiculously great. Um, there's you can go to an open mic night in five six different places any night of the week within I don't know. 45 minute drive of my house. And I'm, I'm not in the middle of this metropolitan area. I'm kind of on one corner of it. Um, and, and then, so most of them are just like really good and lively and there's people at them and people playing are talented. It, it's really good. Um, so I, I don't want to leave that, but I'd like to take the next step into playing club shows where, you know, you're, a, you're one of the acts on a bill. You've got maybe a half hour to play instead of, 10 or 15 minutes um they're charging money at the door maybe that kind of thing i'd like to get into that and then I'd, from there i'd like to you know sp spread this part of the country is new to me so i'd like to you know i'd like to travel around a little bit and play some of the other places that are that are nearby or you know around north carolina and maybe virginia and tennessee okay. maybe the whole east coast and tomorrow the world <laughs> hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? Right. <laughs> well, most I'm just having fun uh, making up songs and 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 showing them to people, and um, you know, just I, a, a big part of my creative process. I mean, I am a writer by trade, and um, so I, you know, I started a newsletter, 
Um, and so I, I most, mostly about once a week, I put out a newsletter and I, that's not a rote thing. Like that's, that's creative writing for me. And I, um, I enjoy doing that as well. So I just want to, I just want to keep doing all that stuff. All right. We're going to finish this up with a lightning round. Okay. Okay. Um, rapid fire questions. Just give whatever answer and then we'll go on to the next one and, and we'll go from there. Okay. You ready? <laughs> all right. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So what's your favorite food? My favorite food is uh, chicken mole. Chicken mole. Okay. Least favorite food? American cheese. <laughs> okay. Now, favorite color? <laughs> Black. Black. Least favorite color? Oh, I don't know that I have a, a least favorite color. It used to be purple. It used to really, purple used to really bug me, but I've been, I sort of like, I went through that, uh, what is it, the, uh, that kind of training when I, asked, I wore a purple shirt and stuff. I was like, it's fine. I don't have a least favorite color. All colors are good. It's good enough for flowers. It's good enough for me. They're there all colors. It's a naturally occurring one. <laughs> all right. Favorite thing to wear on a cold day? Ooh, um, I like, I have a collection of like knit caps, like beanies, uh, some of them are tight, you like watch caps and some of them are the ones with the, the, you know, the pom pom on it. And or like, it's a, it's a, a team name or something like, I kind of like, I kind of like those. Okay. Uh, what is something you've, you have always wanted? Something I've always wanted. Oh my gosh. Um, I would say something I've always wanted is more time. <laughs> it's, more. It's, there's never enough time. I just don't want, I, I want more time. I can see that. I can understand that too. <laughs> never have enough time. Uh, what's the favorite thing you own? Uh, I think it's probably at this point, my guitar. I just, I, I, I love that thing. I don't, I don't know that I, I don't have any particular feelings about it as an object, but I love that I own a guitar and I love playing it. And then if I had, this place was on fire, it's probably, I mean, probably what I'd grab would be some combination of computer and photos so that my, you know, pictures of my kids would survive. But um, that aside, I'd probably grab the, the guitar. Okay. All right. And if you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? Time travel. Okay. Um, because I love the idea of time travel. Um, I'm uh, Actually, the most recent song that I made up was about time travel. It's, it's a very rare thing. It's a true story about time travel. Uh, there aren't too many of those, I think. Um, I, I'm so fascinated by movies and books about time travel. And I, well, I, I mean, I go through phases where I'm like I'm reading a bunch of time travel novels in a row or whatever. And I'm doing that now. Uh, my wife made me promise that if I ever got a chance to time travel, that I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't leave her in the present. So I, I promised that and uh, I figured that was an easy promise to make. And so then I thought it would, I thought funny idea of this is that like, this is what the song is about is that I was lying when I made that promise that like, if I get the chance, I'm, I'm going. And so that's what the whole <laughs> song is about all the things I would want to do when I time travel. And, um, so yeah, but I, I mean, I really do. I, I really think that would be super cool to, to, you know, go to see what 1737 looked like as long as I knew I could make it back. Right. Maybe start off small, a couple seconds in the past. <laughs> Last Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody time travels to, like, the Revolutionary War or Henry VIII's court. It's never like, oh, yeah, I woke up and I was in a, you know, I was in a drugstore in Akron, Ohio, and it was, you know, three weeks ago. Like, it's never like that. It's always romantic. Yeah. But, yeah, I would hope you'd have some control over it. Yeah, you would definitely, you would definitely hope, but, yeah. All right, so I'm going to give you the last word here, uh, sign it out, and then we'll finish uh, finish this up. Uh, tell us where we can find your music, where we can follow you on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Go for it. You can find me almost everywhere in one of, with one of two search terms. One is The King Team. So if you just search The King Team on Spotify or wherever, you'll find my music. And uh, if that doesn't work, try King Team Music. Um, 
And so, you know, the kingteen.com, but like my Instagram and my Facebook and all these different things are, are King Teen music. And uh, with one of those, you should find me. Um, it's not the Teen Kings. That was Roy Orbison's band before he got famous. So th- that'll come up in a search once in a while, but uh, it shouldn't be too confusing. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, uh, the King Team, for uh, being uh, being with me today and uh, doing this interview. <laughs> thank you very much. It was fun. I really enjoyed it.